Hello, in this lesson we are going to be talking about local linearization and how we can use tangent lines to approximate the value of functions. Let's start by considering the function g of x equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 2. The first thing we're going to do is use the limit definition of the derivative to find the equation for y equals g prime of x. We'll begin by writing the limit definition of the derivative, so we want the limit as h approaches 0, g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Now off to the side, I'm going to write down what g of x is. Negative x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I'm going to write what g of x plus h is. For that, we just replace the input x in the original equation g of x with x plus h. So negative x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h plus 2. And let's go ahead and simplify this completely. So x plus h, that quantity squared, is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I'll distribute the 3 here, so it's plus 3x plus 3h plus 2. I have to distribute the negative here, negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 2. Now we have some like terms that we can combine. Actually, we don't. So we will, um, that's, as mu that's as much as we can simplify. So let's go back to our limit. This is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 g of x plus h, I'm just going to write all of that out, negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 2. Now I'm going to subtract g of x, so subtracting negative x squared plus 3x plus 2, all of that over h. Now we have some like terms, but I guess I let me do this in one more step where I distribute the negative. So negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 2. And now I'm distributing a negative 1 plus x squared minus 3x minus 2 all over h. Okay, now we have some like terms. So we have minus x squared plus x squared, that's 0 and I have plus 3x minus 3x, that's 0, and 2 minus 2, that is 0. I'm left with negative 2xh minus h squared plus 3h all over h. I'm going to factor h from the numerator, h times negative 2x minus h plus 3, and then I can eliminate h from the numerator and denominator, leaving me with limit as h approaches 0, negative 2x minus h plus 3. Now to take this limit, we're going to substitute 0 in for h, and we get negative 2x plus 3. And that is equal to g prime of x, negative 2x plus 3. So let me go back and write out g prime of x. g prime of x equals negative 2x plus 3. Part b, we want to find the slope of the tangent line to y equals g of x at the value x equals 2. The slope of the tangent line at the value where x equals 2 is just g prime of 2. And we already have an equation for g prime of x, so now to find g prime of 2, we substitute 2 into g prime of x for the x. So it's negative 2 times 2 plus 3 is negative 1. So g prime of 2 equals negative 1. Next we're asked to find g of 2. So for g of 2, we want to make sure we're using the equation for g of x. When it was g prime of 2, we used the equation for g prime of x. But for g of 2, it's going to be negative 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. So that's negative 4 plus 6 plus 2 is equal to 4. g of 2 equals 4, and I'm going to just highlight that 
in yellow. And we have g prime of 2 equals negative 1. I'll highlight that over there. Next, find an equation for the tangent line to y equals g of x at the point 2 comma g of 2. So we're going to use point slope form to write the equation of our tangent line, y minus the y coordinate of our point of tangency. So here's our point of tangency right here. So y minus the y coordinate equals the slope, which is g prime of 2, the slope at that point of tangency times x minus the x coordinate at that point of tangency. And we can simplify that a bit more because we already know g of 2 equals 4. So it's y minus 4 equals, and we already know g prime of 2 equals negative 1, negative x minus 2. So that is the equation of my tangent line to the graph of g of x at the point where x equals 2. And then finally, we're asked to sketch an accurate labeled graph of y equals g of x along with its tangent line at the point g comma 2 comma g of 2. So given a function f that is differentiable at x equals a, the equation of the tangent line to f at a point a comma f of a, as we've already seen, is given by y equals, or y minus f of a equals, right, so f of a is the y coordinate of the point of tangency. You can see that right here. So y minus f of a equals f prime of a, that's the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at the point where x equals a, then times x minus a. So here a is the x coordinate of that point of tangency. So let's make a note about that that this point right here is called the point of tangency. And this is just point slope formula of the equation of a line. Okay, so this is the equation of our tangent line. Now, if we rearrange terms, if we add f of a to both sides of the equation, then we get this form right here, y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So you can still call this the tangent line equation. But we have another name that we can use for this, and it is called the local linearization. So you'll see that um, line and linear are related terms, right? line and the linearization. Local, the idea behind local linear, if you just think about what the word local means in English, local means nearby. And in terms of what we're talking about here, by nearby, I mean we're working on an interval surrounding a point, a really, really small interval. So we want to be very, very, very close to the point of tangency. We want to be very near the um, point of tangency. Now remember when what's the difference between a tangent line and a secant line? A secant line, if we were going to use a secant line to estimate the slope of a function, we would take two nearby points, two points that are surrounding the actual point of tangency that we're interested in. We would use two nearby points and the closer they are to our actual point, the better our secant line is going to approximate our tangent line. So the, the tangent line is, is what we get when that interval shrinks down to be so tiny that it just, look, it just seems like it's not an interval at all, right? It's a single point. And so that kind of relates to this idea of being local to that point, very, very nearby. How nearby? As close as you can possibly get to the point. Okay, so the tangent line and the local linearization, they mean the same thing. They're not two different things. They're the same thing. It's just another way we can describe it. All right, so we have this conclusion then at the end. If x is really close to a, so a being the x-coordinate of our point of tangency, for x values that are really close to that point, the function f of x is approximately equal to the function l of x. l of x is the tangent line. 
the local linearization or the tangent line. So the function is going to be approximately equal to the tangent line as long as you are really close to the point of tangency. Therefore, we can use the tangent line to approximate the value of the function as long as we stay close to the point of tangency. So here it is in summary, L of x, we're calling the local linearization, which is just another way of saying tangent line, or the line tangent to f at x equals a. And here's the equation we're going to use. The only difference between this equation and what we were seeing before is that we've added the f of a over to the right hand side of the equation. But we have now this um, statement that f of x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a as long as x is near a, as long as we're not too far away from the point of tangency. Now it is very important that we use an approximation symbol here because the function f is not equal to the tangent line at points near a. It's only exactly equal to the tangent line right at x equals a, at that point. But when you move away from that point, your function isn't exactly equal to the tangent line, but it's very near equal to the tangent line. Suppose that for a given differentiable function y equals g of x, the local linearization at the point where a is negative 1 is given by this equation, l of x equals negative 2 plus 3 times x plus 1. Let's find the values of l of negative 1 and l prime of negative 1. So for l of negative 1, we simply have to substitute negative 1 into l of x. So l of negative 1, and we can get that exactly. l of negative 1 equals negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1 plus 1 equals negative 2. Now what is l prime of negative 1? Well, we can find the equation for L prime of x. This is a linear equation. What is the slope of this linear equation? The slope is 3. So we know L prime of x equals 3. And if we substitute negative 1 into that L prime of x equation, we get 3. It doesn't have an x in it, so it's always equal to 3, which makes sense because um, it's a linear function, so its slope is constant. The next question says, what must be the values of g of negative 1 and g prime of negative 1? Well, g is the original function, the graph of the original function. L is the graph of the tangent line. So what is g of negative 1? Well, we know at the point of tangency, the function and the tangent line have the same value. And at the point of tangency, the function and the tangent line have the same slope. So even though we don't have the original equation for g of x, we can say for sure that g of negative 1 equals l of negative 1. So it must equal negative 2. And g prime of negative 1 equals l prime of negative 1. And so that must equal 3. Okay, and that is because negative 1 and then g of negative 1 is the point of tangency. If the question said what is the value of g of negative 2 and g prime of negative 2, we don't know. We wouldn't be able to answer that question. We only can make this assumption that g of negative 1 equals l of negative 1 because we are at the point of tangency. And again, at the point of tangency, so this is like conceptually very important to understand. At the point of tangency, the function and its tangent line. And I, of course, I mean the tangent line at that point of tangency. So at the point of tangency, the function and its tangent line have 1, the same value, and 2, the same slope. 
Okay, very important concept there. So this last question, do you expect the value of g of negative 1.03 to be greater than or less than the value of g of negative 1? Well, we know what g of negative 1 is. g of negative 1 is negative 2, but we do not know what g of negative 1.03 is. However, we know that the derivative or the slope of the tangent line or the slope of the curve at x equals negative 1 is positive. It's positive 3. Because it's positive, because the derivative is positive, we know at negative 1, the function g is increasing. Now, we're not guaranteed that at negative 1.03, the slope is, at x equals negative 1.03, the slope is still positive, but it's likely, right? Because negative 1.03 is very close to negative 1. So if the derivative at negative 1 is positive, and the derivative g prime is positive, meaning the function g is increasing, then it's very likely that it was also increasing at x equals negative 1.03. And if that's the case, if the function is increasing, then g of negative 1 would be higher up than g of negative 1.03, because negative 1 is to the right of negative 1.03 on a number line. So we would expect g of negative 1.03 to be less than the value of g of negative 1 because we expect that the function g is increasing at that point. We know it's increasing at x equals negative 1. It's reasonable to expect that it was also increasing at x equals negative 1.03. Continuing on, use the local linearization to estimate the value of g of negative 1.03. So let's write the equation of the tangent line. Oh no, actually we have it l of x is the equation of our tangent line. That is the local linearization. So use the local linearization to estimate g of negative 1.03. That would be g of negative 1.03 is approximately equal to l of negative 1.03. I didn't use an equal sign there. They're not exactly equal because the point of tangency is at x equals negative 1. They're only exactly equal when x is negative 1. Negative 1.03 is not exactly negative 1. It's a little bit away, but it's only a little bit away, so it's reasonable to assume that they will be now approximately the same. So L of, or I'll just rewrite, G of negative 1.03 is approximately equal to negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1.03 plus 1. And then we simplify that. It's negative 2 plus 3 times negative 0 negative 0 0.03, which is going to be negative 2.09. So I can say that L of negative 1.03 is equal to negative 2.09, but if I write G of negative 1.03, then I have to use an approximation symbol is approximately negative 2.09. So do be careful with your notation there. It depends on how you write it. If you say L of, you can use the equal sign. If you say G of, it's the approximation symbol. Next, suppose we know that G double prime of negative 1 equals 2, second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, that tells us something about the original function. So if G double prime is positive, then we know that g is concave up at that point, at x equals negative 1. And then for x near negative 1, sketch the graph of the local linearization, as well as a possible graph of y equals g of x. So the local linearization is the tangent line. So our tangent line um, it's probably easier to graph if we write it in a different form. So I'll go y equals negative 2 plus 3x plus 3. So 3x plus 1. 3x plus 1. So the uh, y-intercept is 1 and it has a slope of 3. And 1, 2, 3, about like that. So there is um, my tangent line equation. So this is the point negative 1, negative 2 right here. 
my graph might not be perfectly to scale. And this is the 0.1 comma 4. Okay, so we know that at the point where x equals negative 1, the graph of g is increasing because it has a positive slope. The slope is 3. So the graph of g is increasing because its derivative is positive. Now its second derivative is also positive, so it's concave up. So we have to draw the graph increasing and concave up at that point, at x equals negative 1. That's the, what we should see uh, in the behavior of the graph. It has to be increasing and concave up. So it's kind of hard to, to draw increasing concave up right here because it's pretty steep. But concave up, we've got to make the curve opening upward, not downward like that. It's got to be opening upward, so we've got to be over on this side of the line, and it's got to be increasing. So I'm just going to come in something like that. Right? We don't know exactly what it looks like, but that works. At the point negative 1, negative 2, our function g is increasing and it's concave up. We can use the equation of the tangent line at the point a comma f of a. Again, this is the point of tangency. To approximate values of f of x near a. If our approximation is higher than the actual value of f, then we have an over approximation. When does the tangent line give an over approximation? Well, that's wherever the tangent line is higher than the graph of the function. So our tangent line is higher than, we're going to get an estimate that's too high, and we call that an overestimate or an over approximation. So when is the tangent line higher than the actual function? If we look on our examples here, the tangent line is greater than f of x, like here, here, the whole time on this graph. It's always, the tangent line is always greater than, except at the point of tangency where it's equal to the actual value of f. In the first graph, that doesn't happen at all. In the second graph, it happens on a portion of the graph. The tangent line is above the actual value, so the tangent line would be over estimating the value of the function on this portion of the graph that I've highlighted to, to the left of the point of tangency. And then in the last graph, the tangent line is higher than the function f on the portion of the graph that's to the right of the point of tangency. So what do these intervals have in common? What's true about the graph of f in all of these intervals? So what's true about the graph of f here, about this graph, and here, and here? here. Well, those are all of the places where the graph of f is concave down, concave down. And the other places where I did not highlight, um, the graph is concave up. When the graph is concave up, the tangent line is below the curve. We see that here, and we see that here. When the graph of f is concave up, the tangent line is below the curve. So that would be an underestimate. But if we're asking when do we get an overestimate, the tangent line is above the curve whenever the curve is concave down. So when f is concave down. How can we use the second derivative to determine if we have an over approximation? If the second derivative, so f double prime, is negative, that means f is concave down. So that's when we're going to have an over estimate. or over approximation. Okay, and then it's just the opposite for an underestimate or an under approximation. The tangent line is below the curve where the curve is concave up. In the second graph, the tangent line is above the curve, so it would give us an overestimate that entire time because the entire graph is concave down. In the third graph, the tangent line is under the curve here, where the curve is concave up. And same thing here. The tangent line is under the curve, where the curve is concave up. So when does a tangent line give an under approximation? When f is concave up. 
and that is when the second derivative is positive. So if f double prime is greater than zero, we have an underestimate or under approximation. The tangent line to the graph of f equals sine x at the point zero comma zero is y equals x. So this here is our tangent line equation. This implies which of the following? Well, at the point zero, zero, because that is the point of tangency, remember that the value of the function and the value of the tangent line are the same. So the value of the function here at the point of tangency would be the sine of zero. And the value of the tangent line at the point where x is zero would be zero. So f of zero equals sine of zero and y of zero equals zero. And those two things are equal to each other when x equals zero. So we would have sine of zero equals zero for sure. Now, if we move away from the point of tangency, so if we choose a point that is not x equals zero, but it's still very close to x equals zero, then we can still say that this is going to approximately equal this. The value of the function will approximately equal the value of the tangent line. So near x equals zero, the sine of x is approximately equal to x. And in choice A, it's asking about the sine of 0. 0.0005. Now 0. 0.0005 is near x equals zero. And so we would expect this to be true. The sine of 0. 0.0005 is approximately equal to 0. 0.0005. Okay, so we would go with choice A. Choice B, the line y equals x touches the graph of f equals sine x at exactly one point. Now, that could be true, but it doesn't have to be true. And the question we were asked is, um, what does this imply? So what must be true? What must be true? Or maybe must is, a st is too strong of a word, but reasonable to expect that it's true, right? Because we don't know for absolute certainty that those two things are equal, but it does say an approximation sign there. So we can, we have um, lots of reason to believe that this is a true statement. But part B, a tangent, a tangent line doesn't, isn't limited to just touching the graph one time. That does not have to happen, especially on a sine graph, right? If we have a graph of sine and we have uh, a point on the graph here and we draw our tangent line, it's gonna touch the curve at that point. But if we keep going, it also touches the point, the curve at some other point, okay? So B doesn't have to be true. It might be true in this case, but it doesn't have to be true. So no. And then the last statement, y equals x is the best straight line approximation to the graph of f for all x. No, not for all x, only for x equals zero, or we could say x near zero would be reasonable but it's only gonna be perfect at x equals zero and it'll be reasonably good for x near zero, but definitely not for all x. Suppose f double prime of x is less than zero. So as soon as I see this, second derivative negative, as soon as I see that, I think f concave down. And I don't know if we have to use that for this problem, but that's always what jumps right into my head. When I see second derivative is negative, immediately conclude f is concave down for an x value near the point a, near the point where x equals a. Then the linearization of f at a is which of the following? Well, if our function f is concave down and you were to pick any point on the curve where it's concave down, you will see that your tangent line is above the curve. And so your tangent line, and remember that linearization of f is just another way of saying tangent line. So your tangent line is going to be over the graph. It's gonna give you an over approximation. Normal lines, the word normal in mathematics has a very special meaning. Normal, that word means perpendicular.
the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So if t of x is the equation of the line tangent to f, and it's given by this equation, this is the local linearization equation here, then the line normal to f is just going to be the line perpendicular. And what do we know about two lines that are perpendicular? They have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we know if the graph of the tangent line has a slope f prime of a, then the graph of the normal line has a slope opposite, so negative, reciprocal, 1 over f prime of a. And the um, point of tangency will remain the same. So the normal line, I guess we can use an n for normal equation, is going to pass through the same point, so the same f of a value, but the slope is going to be different. I was about to write plus, but it's going to be minus. 1 over f prime of a times x minus a. So it's still passing through the same point a f of a, but the slope is different. The slope is negative 1 over f prime of a, opposite reciprocal slope. Let f be a differentiable function defined at every real number x, and f of 2 equals negative 1. We're looking at the graph of f prime of x, and we want to find a formula for the tangent line approximation to f at the point 2, negative 1. If you want to write the equation of a tangent line, you need two things. You need to know the coordinates of the point of tangency, which we have. We already have the point 2, comma, negative 1. So that's going to help us out. That's the point of tangency. And then we need to know the slope of the tangent line. If you know those two things, you can write the equation of the tangent line using point-slope form equation. So we need to figure out the slope of f at x equals 2. And we have the graph of f prime of x, which is the graph of all the slopes of f. So if we want to find f of 2 and f prime of 2, we get f of 2 just by looking at the coordinates of the point here. f of 2 equals negative 1. f prime of 2 is just the value, we can read that right from the graph, it's the value of f prime when x equals 2. So it's that value right there, which is a positive 2. Once you have the coordinates at the point and the slope at that point, you can write your equation. It's y minus the y coordinate, so y minus negative 1, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. And then if we want to put it in L of x form, we can say L of x equals, I'm just going to subtract this one right here on both sides of the equation. So negative 1 plus 2 times x minus 2. Now use the tangent line approximation to estimate the value of f of 2.07. f of 2.07 is approximately, we can use now our local linearization, L of x is approximately equal to L of 2.07. And we have the equation for L, so negative 1 plus 2 times 2.07 minus 2. And let's simplify that. 2.07 minus 2 is 0.07. If we multiply that by 2, we get 0.14. So negative 1 plus 0.14 is negative 0.8. 2? No, 0.86. Wait, let me check that. Well, what did I say? Negative 1 plus 0.14. Yeah, negative 0.06. That is our estimate for f of 2.07. Okay, so we can say f of 2.07 is approximately negative 0.86. Sketch and label a graph for f double prime of x on the right. Okay, so we've done this a few times already, sketching the graph of a derivative. f double prime is the derivative of f prime. So I'm thinking about slopes when I look at this f prime graph. The slope here, 0. So x coordinate of 2, y coordinate of 0 on the derivative graph. And then right here, the slope looks like it's 2. So point right here. 
And I know that a quadratic function, when I take the derivative, is going to become a linear function, so I don't really need to plot any more points. I have enough to graph it. But if you need a couple more, this would probably be another good one. If we draw the tangent line there, it has a slope of negative 2. So when x is 4, negative 2. And then we can draw our derivative graph. So this is f double prime of x. Is the slope of the line tangent to y equals f of x increasing, decreasing, or neither when x equals 2? Well, the slope of the line tangent to y equals f of x at x equals 2 is 0 because that graph in the middle is the f prime of x graph. The slope of the tangent line is talking about f prime. So this is another way of saying, is f prime increasing, decreasing, or neither when x equals 2? So what is f prime of 2? f prime of 2 equals 2, and f double prime of 2 equals 0. The slope of f prime is 0. But we have to be careful. This is, get, this is getting really tricky. We have to be careful here because it's the slope of the line tangent to y equals f of x. So it's asking us, is f prime increasing, decreasing, or neither when x equals 2? And we can see on the graph right here, when x equals 2, f prime is not increasing and it's not decreasing. It's neither. It's neither increasing nor decreasing. That's right when it turns. It was increasing. f prime was increasing until we got to x equals 2, and then it turns and starts decreasing. OK, and then finishing this up, sketch a possible graph of f. What are our clues? Well, we know that on the graph of f prime, f prime is positive between 0 and 4. And that means the graph of f is going to be increasing. So between 0 and, here's 4 right here, um, our function is going to be increasing. OK, so in this portion of the graph, it's got to be increasing. This, or the second derivative, y equals f double prime. So the second derivative is positive to the left of x equals 2. So here, the graph is going to be concave up, concave up. And the second derivative is negative when x is more than 2. So over here, when x is more than 2, it's going to be concave down. You have to keep multiple things straight in your head at once, right? And then we said here, between um, negative 2 and 2, f has to be increasing. So we're drawing something that starts out concave up, decreasing because here, since f prime is negative, um, this is going to be decreasing. So we have to start out decreasing but concave up. And then right when x is negative 2, we have to switch and still be concave up but increasing. And then from 2 to 4, we're increasing and concave down. And then from 4 to 6, we have to be um, decreasing and concave down. So this is decreasing again after 2. After 2, f prime is negative, and that means f is decreasing over here. OK? I also can use this clue that f double prime is linear. So f prime is quadratic. So f um, regular f is going to be cubic. If you know what a cubic function looks like, that can also help you out a little bit. We also have on the derivative graph here, the derivative is 0. And here, the derivative is 0. And when is the derivative 0? That would be our turning points on our graph of f. That would, would be where we have a maximum and a minimum. So we are going to start out decreasing concave up and you're not it, we I have no idea how really how high up or how far down to draw the graph so I'm just gonna you know just draw something uh, it says a possible graph right so I'm going to draw something that's decreasing and concave up 
decreasing and concave up, and then as soon as I hit that kind of boundary point, I have to switch, and now I have to be increasing, but still concave up. Increasing, concave up, and now when I hit this boundary again, I have to switch to concave down. Still increasing, but I need to be concave down that and then right there at that boundary I have to switch again and I have to start decreasing but stay concave down okay so maybe something like that all right that does it for lesson 2.6 in our next lesson we're going to be starting unit 3 where we start looking at some other ways to find derivatives